Mr. Youngbert, you claim the defendant's infidelities not only caused you to cancel your wedding, but also now to doubt paternity of her two-year-old daughter, Peyton. You're demanding a paternity test to prove you are not the father. Ms. Samnop, you thought you were doing the right thing by being honest with Mr. Youngvert, but say your honesty has done nothing but cause turmoil in your household. You maintain you are sure Mr. Youngvert is your child's father. Mr. Youngvert, what's at stake today? This ring, Your Honor. Our loyalty, our trust, our family, the way we handle things day to day is at stake. That's a lot. So this has truly affected your relationship? Entirely. And your ability to be a family? Yes, Your Honor. Do you want I don't to... understand why he's, I came clean about it. I mean, if he's still having trust issues, then what are we doing here? Why are we still together? He forgave me for he it. He says and... he's unable to move forward with the wedding until he knows for sure. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> and that hurts you as well? Yes. Because you feel like you were honest? Yes, Your Honor. And I feel like... If I was honest with him about that one time, then why, why would I still lie? Because if, there, if there's that doubt once, what's to say there's not that doubt again? Why would I continue to lie? I did something wrong and I admitted my mistake. Take me back. Tell me a little bit about this relationship. We started young. Uh, she was 16, I was 17, and I always wanted to be with her. I always wanted her to be mine. Ever since then, we've been stuck like glue. I couldn't imagine life without him. We thought all the pieces were gonna fit together, and they did for a while. And so, take me to the day when she told you she was pregnant. When I found out that she was pregnant, she, you know, at first I thought it was a joke, but then, you know, but like five minutes into picture. the conversation, I you sent know, him she a sent picture, a picture of, of the paper, the... of the HCG yeah, positive and, and, test you know, that, that the doctor had given that me. Was a, that was the happiest day of my life. And he called me immediately after bawling. Just, he, he, couldn't, he didn't believe it was the truth. So you were very happy. Oh, yeah, extremely. I can see the emotion. Yeah, right just now, beside, even I, when you was, think about it. I was beside myself, you know. I um, couldn't say we were ready, but... We got ready fast. We were ready. You found out you were having a baby. Yeah, I, sat, I, made, I made her dinner. I was excited. I was happy. I was you were excited happy. because you thought you were the father. Yeah, I, I, I called off work. Because we were finally a family. I said, I'm having a baby. You know, I just found out that, I'm, you know, we're pregnant. We made dinner, we sat down. And we just enjoyed each other's company. And, and so I immediately at, asked her to marry me. You, you, know, you asked her to like marry you. Within five minutes of it, you know, I was just cut her hand. Ass, you know? And so you proposed, you said yes. Of course. And then what happens that... Because, um... Changes the tide on all of before, this. Before I got pregnant, Your Honor, um... It was right before Christmas. We're doing fine, and then all of a sudden, we got in a petty argument. I can't remember exactly what it was over, and it lasted for a couple days, and I ended up just wanting to give him his space because he didn't want to talk to me, and I really didn't, honestly, didn't want to talk to him at the moment. So I went to the bar, and I got drunk, and I ended up not remembering anything that happened to me that night, and I, my intention wasn't my intention wasn't to no, cheat on not. him. I didn't I didn't go out to to have sex with another guy. I went out to just relax, take a breath, and just recollect my thoughts and, and let him have some time to breathe. But she can't explain to me. You know, I want details. Every man wants details. Every wants to, every man wants to know who did it, wh who it was, when it happened, why they do it. And, and that's what I'm confused about. I can only from that night. The only thing I can remember is taking a couple sips of my first drink. And the next thing I remember, I'm waking up in somebody's bed. I don't know who he is. I don't know where I am. I don't this know what happened. I, I didn't, and I looked around to try and find all my stuff. And like, I was trying to recollect what had happened and, and so, nothing came to me at all. And it's, to me, it seems like somebody took advantage of me that night. So you went to the bar to basically drown your sorrow. Exactly. And ended up waking up in a stranger's bed. Yes, Your Honor. Did the you moment know I, I if felt you had guilt had immediately. Sex? I have no clue. I tried, like, while I was gathering my things, I was looking around, like, in, in the garbage, the garbage can, and trying to see if I could find a condom or a condom wrapper, but I didn't find either. Where was this person? Asleep in his up? bed, and I woke up. I gathered my things, and I left. I didn't stick around to see what would happen. When you woke up, did you have your clothes on? Partially. At one point. Mr. Youngvert, did you find out about this night? I told him two months after I found out I was pregnant. 
I, I tried to break it to him easily, but he could tell right away that I had something on my chest that I wanted to get off because... We were still in the beginning. Of, had... of the pregnancy, and we were still fresh parents. And I was so ashamed of myself for betraying the one that I love, the man that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I wouldn't have said yes to him when he asked me to marry him if I didn't want to spend the rest of my life with him. In the beginning, I had no idea. I had made dinner for her, and she sat down. She's within the first to seven, five to seven minutes, she told me, you know, she's like, I got some news for you. And then just right, right then and there, I knew, you know. I He's knew. like, you knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And when I you heard this patient. news that she had, had this night and cheated, I what stormed, did you do? I, st I stormed out. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't go drink. You I, canceled I, I, the wedding? I canceled the wedding. I canceled everything. I... We, he didn't, we didn't break up. He just said the wedding's off. The wedding's, he said, forget the wedding's about the off, wedding. Walked away. I didn't talk, didn't answer any It's text. not just him that's hurting. It's me hurting, too, because that 3% possibility that he's not her father, I won't be able to tell her who her father is because I don't know. And I can see that upsets you. <laughs> Mr. Youngbird, at what point did you figure out that the other man may be the father? We sat down and I got, we went through I got up on this app and we just started punching in the days. I actually have it right here. Uh, I could present this to you if you don't mind. It, I would it's, like to it's, see it, It's please. about uh, the... So you went back to this app that you discovered. Yes. Tell me what this shows me. The set. In yellow are the dates you were ovulating. Am yes. I correct? Yes, Your Honor. And then in blue are the dates you were intimate with Mr. Youngbert. Yes, Your Honor. And in red is the date of the one night stand. Yes, Your Honor. For which you have no recollection. Yes, ma'am. Both of these men fall within the window of conception. Yes, Your Honor. Once you realized this, did you ever try to find the other guy? I tried to th rack my brain to try and remember anything. I can't even remember the name of the bar. We ended up. I can't remember, like, I'm trying to think about, like, retracing my steps to see if anything looked familiar and nothing helped. And I can't remember anything about that night. And, how do and I you know? have no idea. No clue whatsoever. And I have no clue if this is the only time that she don't remember. Hold on now, Mr. Youngbert. You said something important. You're saying... You don't remember this time. You, how do I know? She's not gonna do that again or has already done that again. Okay, well, at least I told you about what I did instead of hiding it from you and going behind my back to one of my really good girlfriends, I mean, if you just, texting uh, her, telling her to text me so you guys can see each other. I know, but I... I, I Wait a minute. And you, and you want to say that what I did was wrong, what you did was wrong, too. No, you may have never gotten together with her. But you still attempted. And you still would have continued if I wouldn't have stopped you. I wasn't getting the... Uh, you weren't getting the what? I the satisfaction that you need as a, a man at home? Exactly. With the woman who sits at home what, all day, every needed. day, taking care of getting, our child? I wasn't getting the attention Taking care of I you? I wasn't getting the attention. I'm the breadwinner. I'm the one I who makes the money. I never said you're not. She hasn't worked in I six never, years. And why is that, Mr. Uh, Youngford? Why is that? You asked me the day that we got together, don't worry, honey, you'll never have to work a day in your life. That's me being a man. And that's me acknowledging I respect you for that. How many times have I told you I want to go get my own job so I have something to feel good about? You don't need to do that. I make I money. feel like I need to. I want to. I want to feel appreciated like I appreciate you. I can gather that there is very little trust in the relationship right now. I trust him 100%. I trust him. I've gotten over him. Do you trust her, Mr. Youngberg? No, he does not. Not wholeheartedly. Well, you no asked the court for a lie detector test. And that lie detector test was administered. We will have those results in just a moment. I want to know specifically, you say you trust her to an extent. It's obvious one of the reasons why you don't trust her, but why? There's been, in the beginning, even, even while she was pregnant with our, our daughter, she would get texts saying, are you up? From random numbers. These aren't numbers that are named in her phone. Like, are you up? Uh, is Dustin around? Question mark. You know, and then, and then I'd be awake, I'd catch this. And I, she and would, get, I, I would, I would not reply. Friend. I would not reply. Come to find out it was his no. friend texting my phone no. because he, his phone was dead one day and he had my phone. My friends, no. But, yeah. Mm. I'm sick of the name calling. He calls, he calls me a whore. He calls me a slut. 
Just, and I'll it's get like I'll a get couple text times after a week or maybe a couple times a month. He'll just get this wild hair just for no reason. I'll just delete. keep bringing up, you know, oh, well, why don't you go have sex with this dude and not tell me about it? Or why don't you go and do this? Mr. Youngver, you're talking like that at home? Yeah, I, it's just, that, that has to... Well, you like told the there. court that you trusted her somewhat, but it doesn't seem like you trust her at all. Thank you. I try, I... Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I, I don't see this. You don't, I don't trust, trust me. Her, Before he goes to bed at night? Oh, you didn't... You, trust me, that was testimony you had already given. I do not trust you her. You don't trust her. You're right. I want to. As you look at Peyton, do you see yourself? Do you see a resemblance? I mean, her hair, I mean, it's pure blonde. I'm a redhead. I was you know? blonde as a child, Your and, Honor. And, I mean, I got hazel eyes. Yeah, her eyes get green, her eyes get blue, and we'll get down you there. You green we, eyes, we, and we, I have blue eyes, and her eyes we've are We've analyzed her together. We've analyzed her together. We'll get down there, and you'll be and like, what did no, I look, tell at the, you? look at the blue what did inside I tell her you? eyes. Look at the blue inside her eyes. Like, you what probably branded you? It's, you brand it's, into my two head. Two brown-eyed parents could have mind. a blue-eyed baby. It's all about the recessive and dominant genes. You don't know what color her eyes are gonna be. So the bottom line is, Mr. Youngbird, this is a beautiful baby. It lives in your home. And when you look at her, you continually have doubt about who her father truly is, Every if day. she's really not your just, biological child. Not just about child. who her father is, about my actions and what I'm doing. Like, there'll be times when he's getting ready to go to bed and he'll be like, am I gonna wake up with you gone again? Which yeah, has never happened. It happened one time and I was out. You don't out. remember, but it's happened more than one time. I wake up at 12 in the morning, she's gone. She fell asleep at the river uh, twice uh, no, I went in a row. And then she'll cut, the she'll pay, you'll come back. I was sick of you calling me a whore, so I left and I asked fell asleep in the car. Why you sleep at the, the riverfront in the car when you got a perfectly good bed right here? Oh, next to a man who's calling me a whore and a slut? Seriously? It's a man you love. I do love you, but if you love me, you wouldn't say those things to me. There's well, that, I can see that, that this has definitely taken a toll on your relationship. Quite frankly, this is a toxic environment for a child to grow up in. You have to know that. I totally agree, Your Honor. But yeah, ultimately, what I'm hoping today is that we can figure out what the truth really is. The first thing we're going to do is get the results of the lie detector test. I have those. Well... <laughs> Mr. Youngbird, in your testimony today, you said you are fully aware of one instance of cheating that night. You suspect there may be others. Yes, you yeah. wanted to know if there were others. Yes. You're about to find out that your insecurities have eaten you. Miss Sandnop, you met with a licensed polygraph expert. Yes, Your Honor. And what do you believe we will find out? That I'm telling the truth, 110%. Okay. Miss Sandnop, you were asked if you had sexual relations with anyone other than Mr. Youngvert since the one night stand you admitted to. You said no. The lie detector determined that was the truth. I told you. I told you. Not everybody is on this earth to hurt your feelings. You do understand, however, that Peyton's paternity is still in doubt. Yes. Yes, Your Honor, I do understand. We looked at the calendar both men fall within the window of conception. That's true. Do you remember the 22nd? Oh, I don't remember it. You're right. You want to tell me something I already don't know? Are you, you keep ready? keep bashing me? I'd like to tell you both something you don't know, <laughs> which is the truth. No, I know the truth. That I don't remember that night. The truth I'm speaking of is the, is the truth as it relates to Peyton's paternity. I have the results. Are you ready? Yes, yes, Your Honor, I am. No matter what these results say, you have to figure out how to move forward. You two have spoken about how much you love one another, how much you've waited to be together. Mentally, it's difficult for me to grasp the fact that there's a little bit of doubt. Let's get the truth. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Youngvert versus Sam not. When it comes to two-year-old Peyton Youngvert, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Youngvert, you are the father.
I told you. I told you. What? <laughs> Will you marry me? Yes. Again. <laughs> That's what this courtroom is about, bringing families together. And it's nice to see you all on the same side of the aisle. Thank we you. can move forward now. <laughs> we can move on. You promise? You promise that everything that you've said to me in the past stays here in this courtroom and will not come home with us? It'll never flow out my mouth again. <laughs> You promise? I promise. Mr. Harrelson, you admit to having a one-night stand with a defendant whose name you didn't even know 19 years ago. You claim you are the victim of paternity fraud and now you are more than $20,000 in debt for a child you don't believe is yours and have never met. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, you claim the plaintiff is your daughter, Talia's biological father, and the results will prove it today. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Talia is here. Yes. Mr. Harrelson, are you ready to see her for the first time? Yes, Your Honor. Jerome, will you please escort her in? Yes. You couldn't even look at him when you came in? <laughs> Is it too painful? What do you feel, Miss Smith? It's emotional, because I ain't never seen him before. I still can't look at him. I don't want to be crying. <laughs> and you can look at me. Okay? <laughs> okay. Please take me back to the time in which you met. We had just moved to Detroit. And my sister, she had moved in with a friend. So we went over there. We had a visit. We were sitting, drinking, and talking. We were talked on the step for a minute. We went upstairs and had sex, and that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. So it really was a brief encounter. Yes. Right, and then, see, after that... And, Mr. Harrelson, you say away. you didn't even know her name. No. He knew my name. I knew his I didn't know nickname. Of her, you know what I'm saying? Like, we only knew nicknames from each other, like right. what people called us. You know, we didn't know each other. So how did she tell you she was <sighs> pregnant? I didn't know about the pregnancy. I only knew when the baby was here. So I didn't tell y'all pregnant in the beginning? No. How, how could you? Because we were still in the same area. No. When she came back in the picture or in town or wherever she was from, she I didn't never leave. She seen my mother. I didn't I left. never leave. I left. Okay, so how you so gonna put you it on me? So you left town. You yes, left. I left town. After this sexual encounter, you, gonna put on you left here? town. Right. All right, and the next thing you hear is what? Well, I come back to her telling my mother that I have a child. And so was Mr. Harrelson the only man you were having sex with at the time? Yes. That's not what you told That's me. not true. Yes. That's not true. Yes. So Miss Smith? That's not true. Yeah, as her. Talia, you say that's not true? Mm-mm. She said she was talking to somebody else. She said after her oh, and my daddy... The same the, as around was... the time her and my daddy had sex, she was talking to somebody else. Because we wasn't in no relationship. It was just a hit it and quit. And we, we wasn't in no relationship. Like said, we, we just we had both, sex, and that's what it was. We both were... She was in and out of <laughs> but town. He, it, but, no, with but all was... due respect, there are many people alive yeah, here on is. this earth who are products of hit it and quit it. Right. right. It is. So that, it that, is. It that's is. just reality. It is. How did you even find out you were on child support? When I started working, um, it just started coming out of my check. But in 2001 or two is when I noticed money started So you out. never got a summons to appear in court? No. You know why I didn't? Because I didn't have an address. I was not in town. The how, how he got on child support, how he told me was... After they had sex or whatever, he said he was... It was around his birthday, he was up under influence, and supposedly my mama stole his ID and his social security card and went to put him on child support. 
when she went to go put oh. my child support, she gave them the wrong address, so therefore he never received no child support. No. Wait, hold that's on, not hold on. what it was. Wait, really? hold on. You're really? saying you Mr. Harrelson told you that story? Yes. Mr. Really? Harrelson, what, what story is that? A stealing of the ID? What? I know for a fact she stole my ID and my social security card. And she told How me you she know stole for it. A f- she told me what? she stole it. I didn't tell the you same. I stole nothing. If you didn't know his real name, uh-huh. You only knew the nickname. Uh-huh. How did you find out his full How name people, uh, to put him on child support? The people we were standing with, he been upstairs for... I don't know how long. How long he been living upstairs from the people downstairs. They knew his name. And so, when she went down and followed this process, at the point she gave your name and address, there should have been a letter, a summons sent, something to tell you to appear in court for a DNA test. Mm-hmm. You never got that? No, I didn't. Explain. I wasn't, in, I wasn't in the States. I was... I was gone. And so, at that point, you pretty much missed the court date. Yeah, I missed all of the court dates. So, what we do know is that if you miss a court date, you're going to be named the father by default. Exactly. And now you're $20,000 in debt because you did not show up to court. Mm -hmm. And this debt is all for a child you don't believe is your biological child. See, but the thing about that is... I've tried throughout the years to get DNA tests, and she just wouldn't cooperate with that. He didn't want to pay for it. He wanted me to go half. I'm not paying for half. It... I know she mass. <laughs> I know she mass. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. I think this is an important time. It is. As we begin to talk about all of the things that were happening. All this time, you were growing up without a dad. Mm. And what was life like growing up without your dad? So much so that when you walked in here, you couldn't even look at him. At the end of the day, there's nobody like your real dad. And I just never could, like, really, like, connect with any other male because, like, there really wasn't my dad or whatever. Tell me about your childhood. What was it like? It was rough all the way up until, like, five or six years ago. When you say it was rough, what do you mean? Like, we wasn't stable. We was always moving around or whatever then. Five years ago, I had a son. Mm. And I'm not saying that was because of, like, stuff my mama did or because we weren't stable, but she just let me do... She just let me do whatever I wanted to do. And you felt like you had no boundaries. You had no stability. I can see the tears in your eyes. That upsets you that you didn't have that. Yeah. I mean, because I wouldn't have had a baby so young, I wouldn't have had to grow up so fast. I wouldn't have had to do none of that if, if my mom was just like, sit your tail down somewhere. Or if I had a dad, he'd be like, sit your tail down somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, or tell me what, what to do, what not to do. And... That's one thing. I've had dialogue back and forth with her since she was 14, I think, 15. But she contacted me on Facebook saying, I think you might be my father. So... Talia, tell me about that search. I mean, I think you said that so beautifully, too. And I haven't... I don't think I've heard any, you know, young person come into this courtroom and express it in that way, that they just wish they had a father or mother to tell them to go sit down somewhere. Because you hear so often children, it it seems as if they resent when their parents parent them. And I hear you now saying that you wish you had that 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 could have been life-changing for you. For someone to tell you that's enough, you need to come in at a certain time, have a curfew, you don't need to be out with him. You wanted that kind of parenting. I mean, I, I wasn't and even... she had it until she wanted to be hot. But you should tell me to stay my way out. Oh, I didn't have a home, I forgot. Oh. I heard that. I and that's okay too. for you to speak your truth. I've, I've always asked my mama, she could tell you, I've always asked her who my daddy was. She never gave me a different name. She always said his name was Raymond Harrison. He had, like, two pages then. And so I mentioned both of them. I was like, I think you my dad, I think you my dad. It was, like, 2014. He said, is your mom Kawana? I was like, yeah, why? And then the conversation just went from there. So, Mr. Harrelson, when you get that message and you see it's Talia and she's mm-hmm. saying, I think you're my dad, you ask her, is this your mother? Yes. What do you do next? Well, basically, I'm just making sure she... But how can you ask her daddy? He didn't know my name, so... How can you ask her that? 
If your mama this and you ain't know my name, and we ain't never speak this out is, to that, that this is so. this is what three three years ago. I've been paying child support for since 2001. Oh, I know your name. Yes, you do. <laughs> you, you didn't know he was paying child support. No, I, I didn't know. He, I didn't know he was paying child support until a couple years ago. What? And so you never feel like you, you benefited from that girl, child support or... You got or... the card. You been using the money. You got the card. I ain't never had a couple card. Years ago, a couple years ago, girl. right? Girl. Because I... Because... Yeah, but that mama, that mama, you had the card. Yeah, because it was, and I took it. Yeah. So what are you complaining for? I ain't complaining. I'm, I'm just saying, I didn't know he was paying child support until a couple years ago, because if he was paying child support, you're supposed to support the child with child support. Mm-hmm. She got a right to complain. She has a right to complain. She has a right to speak her peace because she's the one that has lived with this all this time. And to have to have the courage as a young girl to reach out to a grown man and say, I think you're my daddy, that's a lot. What was it like when you connected, when you finally got to talk to him? We just, like, connected or whatever. Because, like, when we would have phone conversations, like... Our phone conversations would be, like, really, really long. We would talk all the time, and, like, we would just have so much in common, and, like, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't weird and it wasn't awkward. And, like, I would always be like, Daddy this, Daddy that. He'd be like, don't be calling me that. Oh, you would call him Daddy, and he said, don't call him that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, I don't know. He said, I'm not saying you... He said, he was like, I'm not saying you is, but just, you know, I don't want you to get used to calling me Daddy, and I don't be your Daddy. Th- wouldn't that be... Bad, you know what I'm saying? She been calling me father all, or well, daddy all this time, and then we found out it's not. So I said, just don't get used to calling me that. I said, I just want to find out the truth, regardless. You know. What and I'm so, saying? have you built a relationship together? <laughs> yes, definitely. you have. Mm-hmm. You talk. Yes, a lot. She, deep down in her heart, she believes I'm her father, and even if I tell her don't call me that, she still will call me that. Mm. Sure is. <laughs> because you do believe he is your dad. Mm-hmm. Have you prepared yourself to lay it if it doesn't go your way? I mean, your mom, you say your mom was honest. She was talking to someone else. It, 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 have you prepared yourself? What if he's not my biological father? Then I'm gonna look at her and say, who is? Because, I mean, I, after, if he not, then I probably won't worry about it because I'm gonna be 20 years old Then I just wouldn't see the point, but... Mm. Oh. 20 years old is still very young, honey. And I want to tell you, there is no time frame on the feelings that you have related to wanting to know your father. Trust me, I see people each and every day, 50, 60 years old, still wanting to know, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I just want you to understand. I wouldn't want to know if he's not because I don't like opening up to people. Like, I have a a wall, and he could tell you I have a wall, and... I don't even want to, like, let him all the way in yet till I find out. And I'm not trying to start over with somebody else. That's just not going to happen. It's hard she, she for She's not you. trying to go past me. I understand why you have the wall. And, Mom, I know this has been not an easy day for you as well, but I see the tears in your eyes because you do care. Mm-hmm. Huh. Crazy. You do care. What are your hopes today as a mother? I hope she is, he is. And what are your hopes today, Mr. Harrelson? I just want the truth. Well, I think I've heard sufficient testimony. And I think it's time we get the truth. Jerome, may I have the results, please? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Harrelson versus Smith, When it comes to 19-year-old Talia Smith, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Harrelson, you are the father. We found your father, Talia. We did it, honey. You made it. (laughs) Thank you, Dad. Thank you. (laughs) 
too. You do the version. I'm sure we should do it. Talia, would you like to go down and stand with your dad? And I want to ask you something. Because when you came in the courtroom, you said you couldn't look at him. Can you look at him for the first time? <laughs> oh, honey. You can cry, too. <laughs> <laughs> and so, can you look at your daughter? Can you look at your little girl? She's been through a lot to get to this point, Dad. I'm proud of you. Oh, we go leave here and do what we got to do. Okay. I'll try. And it's important as her dad that you step in now. You've been a provider, but now be the protector. I plan on it. For a young woman, your father is your hero. So as she said, when she said, I'll try, what she was saying was, these walls I've built are so strong, I don't even know how to bring them down. 